Welcome back to the job site. We're not doing discussions on the project behind me, but this is the project that was discussed earlier in a dozen or so videos on an engineering project. And I am using a CR30 on that project for the focus of the safety system with guard door interlocks, with e-stops, and with fence signal from the robots. So the CR30 does play a big role in this project. We're going to continue exploring the configuration of a CR30, and this doesn't represent a particular project. We're just exploring different ways of configuring the robot and choices that you, that you might make when you're using your 22 plus I.O. points. So let's jump in there again. Let's start where we left off in the last video. This was the configuration that we had, and we had no logic for level A or level B. We went straight from safety monitoring uh, to normal closed contacts for the emergency stop. We had a reset and feedback, and we were driving a safety output, which is an immediate off. And the immediate off outputs, 18 and 19, are connected to, let's call it K1 and K2 contactors. And there's several ways you can go there. You can get safety relays that have force guided contacts, or you can get safety contactors where you have force guided contacts for the status of the relay and the context that you're actually controlling three phase, you know, 480 to a motor or something. So let's start by making some modifications to this configuration. Let's eliminate the feedback. Notice here that for feedback, we have S mf3 okay what happens if we select this and then just hit the delete key notice that the feedback went to none notice also that we have for reset we have smf2 which is being fed from the plug-in module input zero and right here you see we have manual smf2 what happens if we select this and hit delete won't let us delete it so let's go to reset type and select auto that eliminates smf2's use over here now select this and hit delete still won't let us delete i right clicked selected delete and it'll let me do it so let's back up now there is no go back in this software so we have to select this a, a block over there. We can go back and select a reset and that gives us our SMF2 back. So you go to reset type, select manual, and then go here and select SMF2 again. Okay? So when I selected this and hit delete, it won't delete. Let's see if I can do it this way. Right click, delete. And you see what happened? We lost this because it's no longer there but it didn't knock it back to auto reset. It knocked it back to a position where we have to define the reset input because there isn't anything. So if we didn't want a manual reset, then we would ourselves set that back to auto. So this is kind of typical of what we're used to looking at. Now, what I want to do is put in a second device and I'm going to make that a gate switch. So I can double click that pops it in there. Now one thing that you might not have noticed before is that reset and feedback that used to be down here, they did not have a little blue dot to connect up to something. These both do. Well now we've got an immediate off and we got pass through. There's really no way to connect this uh, effectively into this system. So I'm going to take and select that connection and delete it. Okay, so now these went back to blue dots and I'm going to I'm going to assume well, first I'll try just to convert it. I don't know if it'll let me do that or not. So I'm going to go down here and make it an and. I see it won't let me do it. So I'm going to have to delete this connection.
then select this go to toolbox and select and I can drag it over here or just double click and it pops it in there now I can connect the e-stop output to that input on the AND and this one to this one and then I can connect this back up we're back in good shape now now I'm not going to go back and put in the reset and the feedback we, we could do that but you, you've seen how to do that so let's not waste your time showing you that again but notice now that we have an e-stop two-wire e-stop and a two-wire gate switch now the gate switch could be OSSD let's go to advanced settings we could make this to OSSD and the gate switches that I'm using on the project behind me does use OSSD devices let's go back to two normally open or it could be one normally open so you have a two wire emergency stop and then a one wire gate switch uh, what may be escaping you if if it has is that there's all these different seal sil and cat category cat designations and classifications levels of safety that you can accomplish when you go from single wire to two wire you step up the level of safety that you have so you get a a, a higher certification if you like a more safe circuit so we'll go back to two normally closed here now notice it's using 12 and 13 and that's legit so this one uses 12 and 13 this one uses 12 and 13 here's what that means you've got a gate switch and it's a two wire safety gate switch which means it's got two sets of contacts so that means you're going to connect from 12 and 13 to your e-stop contacts and in the case of this project behind me I have at least four two contact two wire e-stop switch it goes from test source A through all four e-stops to input zero and then from 13 through the other contacts on all four e-stops into input one in this case we and it, it could be more than one gate switch wired in series all that we know is that we're coming from 12 and 13 outputs 12 and 13 they're specialty uh, multi-purpose outputs and we're going through the gate switch or switches dry contacts and then coming in on input two and three now notice that when I pop up my choices I could also I can go through regular safety inputs or multi-purpose inputs but remember that the inputs on that combo module that's in slot 2 plug-in module that doesn't come up in either case here because those aren't safety inputs remember I showed you in the first of these three lectures that though they cannot be used as safety inputs okay so there's an example of using a gate switch uh, one thing I failed to mention when I, when I and added the AND gate is that you can specify how many inputs you want up to 24. So we have two, you can't have one because there's nothing to AND. You can't have one and nothing. It's one and one, which is two inputs, or one, two, and three, which is three inputs, etc. So you can have multiple inputs on these logic gates. Remember, you've only got two levels, A and B. So you can't, you can't get too crazy with what you're doing. Now, let me show you another possibility. Let's say that you have a standard signal that you want to use and you want to integrate it. So let's go over here and pick standard signal right there. Okay. And right now that's coming from the plug-in module in slot two uh, let's just say that it's uh, input four from that plug-in module just so we've got something different now see we've got nothing to connect this with but we want to or it uh, with the gate switch okay so let's 
take and I don't think we can, yeah, we can delete. That deletes these two connections. It really, it deletes the pass through, but effectively what we want to do is to disconnect this. And then it'd be nice if I could move this over to there, which I can't. See, I can only delete it. So we'll go over to here and put the and in over there. So we have an and there, and we're going to use a pass through from here to there, okay? Now we're going to put in an or here. So we'll go down, we select or, and then we can put in from here to here, and from here to here, and then we can and this to there. So that means that we have to satisfy the emergency stop and the gate switch or the emergency stop and the standard signal. So this is a good example of having logic at level A and level B. One thing that we've ignored is the input filter. And remember that it's in 25 millisecond uh, intervals or periods, meaning if if I set this to one, then this safety input here, the safety function for the uh, two wire e-stop, it will ignore any changes in state on zero and one, input zero and one, embedded input zero and one, that are less than 25 milliseconds. And this is real typically done, we do this with timers a lot, to debounce contacts in our logic. Notice that each one of these safety functions has its own filter. And these two have discrepancy time because they are two wire. So if there's any discrepancy between these two signals matching right here on source A and source B, well, it comes from source A and B through the switches and then back to these inputs. If they are not in the same state for something greater than 100 milliseconds, that's two times 50, then it declares an error, a fault, a safety fault. So I would be real careful what you do with the filter time because remember that the filter time, if you set that high, like two or three, that would be 50, 75 milliseconds, you could ignore a legitimate safety signal. So you don't go crazy with your filter time unless you really have an issue with contact bounce. I hope this is helping you. The best thing to do is to play with this software and see what it will allow you to assign. Now remember that once you pick any of these IO points, then that's exactly what it's gonna be used for. And you can't reuse these inputs. Now the outputs like the source A and B, you see that we use those uh, 12 and 13, we used them as source A and B for both the, the two wire e-stop and the two wire gate switch. So in the next video, uh, we'll continue to add or use some different safety input devices and maybe change up the outputs a little bit and we'll just keep pounding on it until you've kind of seen uh, the bulk of it. I'm doing these subjects because I don't have access to what I have in my home studio. So I have a whole bunch of stuff already prepared to deliver in a video that I can't do right now because it's not with me. And I need the hardware with me to, to actually download to it and then and go online and demonstrate it for you. So we'll do the best we can with what we got here at the job site and I'll be back in the office in a week or so and do some of the other content. Thank you for watching.